I mean, so um, you are the first woman to um, compose music for Star Trek. Yes. Yes. So congratulations. Thank you. Yes. Uh, what exactly did the showrunners ask you for this score? And what does this score mean to you? Um, for the Star Trek music? Yes. Um, well, they asked me to do it. And I was very excited because I'm, I'm excited. And then by time out of the room, you can get together. Yeah, no, but it's so good. And so it was, you know, I already worked on the audition. So it was, you know, I guess it's floating out. I didn't expect it to happen, but, you know, I was actually, like, kind of surprised. But I knew that this was when it came to the I love writing songs. I love doing it. I love doing it. And my agent's like, you know, I can try to figure your name in the hat, though. So that was really exciting for me. When we talked first about the concept of music, was there were a few questions that I had to clarify. Because I knew that the story was going to explore Spock's character before he becomes the Spock that we know in the original series. And so, like, how does he get there? Um, so there's a little bit of, of like, Absolutely. you know, him exploring his humanity, and, like, 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 like he's, you know, kind of trying to get away. Like, so I wanted to know and, how do we adjust this music? Is this going to be, like, are we doing like, the emotional thing, or are we doing something that's more, more like, uh, in the you know, where, you know, there's a pop band, it's more like ambiguous. So, and then similar to that, there was, like, okay, so what else, how can we tell the backstory of the story? So, there's like a lot of things that I'm strange to know. Like, you know, I get, I get to be part of that journey to, to, to present to the community today. Is really like, like, um, you know, we don't know her as an ensign when she just starts out. Like, you know, she's more than like a um, so, so, it's, you know, it's, this show has a lot of opportunity for me to be like, okay, you know, I am going back to the like, first style of Star Trek. How do I renew it? How do I, like, make it um, still look exciting and modern? And also do, like, all the callbacks for the iconic things. Um, so, yeah, and then, you know, occasionally we do music uh, callbacks for the original series. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm fortunate, I guess. Um, so um about Floor, working on a typo like TV product project has got a lot of it. It wasn't my wish list. Like what kind of feedback or notes did you give you? Those must be interesting. <laughs> um okay, uh well there there was actually to be honest, like it's not most of the notes that we received were not like uh, um it was from what I call Holy Trinity. So, <laughs> Victoria Alonso and Kevin Kennedy and uh, Brad Riverbaum. Brad Webb is more, like, the more involved one, I guess, in this. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, a lot of times they'll have a very story-driven uh, notes. Uh, you know, sometimes they'll be phrased in a really uh, funny way. Sometimes they'll be a little nasty. Like, I, I appreciate that they actually say what they think. Like, they're I'm from Israel, uh, and in Israel, everyone is like, you know, no one is for life. It's very, like, you know, this is what we think. <laughs> Here it is. Deal with it. Um, so I like that, that you know, there was, there was a lot of like directness and like honesty about like, you know, like, this is what we want. We need this to, you know, help us drive this thing forward. Help us have more energy in that scene. Um, you know, actually, the, for example, the scene where uh, they're packing to go to all the and stuff like that. Uh, you know, the, 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 the alcohol and like all, all that stuff. Kind of so they wanted more energy in that. Um, or like uh, the Star Wars scene where he's at the bed and he's talking about like, um, you know, that Thor needs to feel shitty. You know, let's get to feel shitty about that one. So, you know, the original sketch was, you know, uh, a, a little more you know, love, love story kind of thing. Um, and then they were like, let's, let's put more, you know, let's grab this a little forward. So a lot of these notes were, um, you know, what else? Uh, uh, yeah, the story here and stuff. There, there was a fight on the moon, so that was, that was another big note for like, you know, let's, let's actually capture all these like ups and downs, and, like in the fight. Like, okay, oh, they are like, you know, grab all these moments. Um, so yeah, I, I appreciate that because it makes me a better storyteller. It makes, makes me a better filmmaker if I, you know, because I don't know their vision. Like, I've, I've spent like, you know, two months on this film. 
they've been with this firm for like three years. <laughs> they know it a little better than anything they what they want. Um, so yeah, that was helpful. And then the editors are very helpful too, and, and that they are like, oh, we, we, we know what they're looking for, you know, what they're looking for. Um, so yeah, I, I cannot recall any like, specific tech ones. I'm sorry, no, I'm, I'm trying to, maybe it'll come to the a little bit. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, can you talk about the music? Oh, yeah, there, sorry, there's one, sorry, there was one. Um, so, on the Dickens and Seven Day Walk, Taika had an idea of like, putting um, uh, our music, like, <laughs> and uh, I thought it was really cool, but I was like, it was like, it was going to be surfing, because if there's like, Harp playing on the screen, because we saw Harp as, uh, no, we are actually going to see Harp, you know, in the hall of years. Um, but even before that, he was like, let's hint the actual Harp stuff. <laughs> I actually wrote it for such hard things and I didn't really want to do it and it was like a piece too hard. Um, it was one of the least of the I'm hoping that one day maybe they'll have that. Um, but it was a great idea. Can you talk about the musical evolution of Jane and Mighty Dark? Into Mighty Dark? Oh my god, I wish they hadn't believed that scene because there was like a potential story. You know, we could see how she was talking about her and then there's like, you know, and yeah, there, there was an amazing view yeah. there. Uh, yeah. but, yeah. And, and then we used the same, like, um, so that, that, that kind of texture that she has at the very beginning. Um, it's like a, a thematic motif that comes back with no where she's, like, you know, trying to figure out her chapter. Um, and then later on, with the, with the same place, which is like, like, I think, it's like, oh my god, mom, all of that stuff. Um, so that motif. Uh, you have to in that transformation one, becomes like a whole like, epic episode, hey, orchestral fully blown well, you can't, you can't let um, that and then it, it actually there is a bit of a recall to that when he is like fighting for yeah. yeah. the very yeah. 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 Um, the big battle of the um, but I, I wish it was, you know, because that would explain it better, like you can see the progress a little better. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's, I, I do, I think there was like a couple more topics on, on the moon fight, um, what else, uh, when, did, when else did we see the fight? Hmm. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's like I watched the, the movie a thousand times, but like, <laughs> I just... <laughs> um, but yeah, oh my god, I love her. Oh, and then, then she comes back and all that. Good scene. Hi. Hey. What are for you the main differences of working on a series as Star Trek and a movie as Thor, Love and Thunder? Yes. What, 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 main differences to work on a series oh, and a movie? Oh, gosh. Um, well, first of all, uh, the size of the orchestra is huge. Uh, so for Trek, I have about 15 layers, with this I have 90 meters of orchestra, and then there were six singers, which is a lot of So sorry. Uh, we're, like, we're running, we only have a few short, short minutes. Left. Okay. They were actually. Those yeah. Um, so when you're so yeah. So there's that, but but at the end, you know, and obviously there's like a this superhero thing. You know, there's there's like all supernatural elements. You get to do a lot of like really excitement, exciting fight scenes, which Star Trek, you know, has some fight scenes, but a lot of times it'll be like space chases. Like, nice. <laughs> you, know, um, you know, it will not be one on one fights a lot. This will be like a really fun aspect. But the other thing, you still get to explore the feelings, right? Like, when you go, you, 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 do, you know, you score Star Trek, the stories are about, like, let's say, aliens, are about, like, mm -hmm. the crew of the ship, it's about, like, um, uh, rituals of other worlds. Uh, but it's, it, it is about, you know, ultimately, we are exploring humanity through the eyes of whatever story it is, whatever. World is, yeah. right? So we're we're completing this on, on our third you know, society, and it's kind of the same with Paul. Like you know, he's going through a lot. Like he's he's a god. Like they're all gods. But um, you know, he's dealing with the loss. He's dealing, he's dealing with like falling in love. Like all of these things are human. And so all, at the end of the day, we're still telling the story of you know human emotions. Um, so that's, you know, it's not a difference, so it's actually really Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. I am. Yes, thank you so much, guys. Yes. All right. Thanks.